Goku encountered Frieza for the first time, but Frieza pushed him overboard, making Goku become a Super Saiyan for the first time. And it seems like no one's going to be able to stop him. We'll be covering all that and more in this fourth part of What If Goku Was Like Broly. The Saiyans watch on in terror as Goku continues launching Ki Blasts, with Frieza also pretty mortified. There's no doubt that that's the Super Saiyan of legend. No one knew what to expect the Super Saiyan to be like, but definitely not this. Everything around them is completely leveled. Vegeta, Nappa, and Raditz barely make it out. Goku, of course, is pretty unhinged right now, but he attacks the first thing in sight, and that's Frieza. The one good thing about this is, part of him at least knows he has to attack Frieza. And it's a pretty short fight. Goku was already doing pretty well against Frieza before, and now he's just way far ahead. There's nothing Frieza could do. By taunting Goku, that ended up leading to his own death. Because he's brutally beaten by Goku, and then killed. And the Saiyans are still pretty mortified, but at least that's one good thing that came out of this. They try and call King Cold over as well. Hopefully they can get a 2 for 1 special. But for now they need to remain hidden, or at least escape. But there's a big issue. Goku pretty much destroyed everything at the base. Goku actually has their spaceships in a capsule, but they're lucky enough to actually find one somewhere else. There are a few ships that got untouched, but they need to leave right now if they want to survive. Frieza's dead, and Goku's not their problem. Even better, Goku might just end up killing himself in the process. If he destroys the planet, he'll die. And that way, they won't have to worry about him anymore. They won't have anyone to stand up against them. The Saiyans will be the strongest. Frieza and Cold will be gone, and so will Kakarot. They'll be free to do whatever they want. They get on their ship and leave. And by the time Goku notices that the ship escaping, it's already too late. He hears a voice talking to him in his head, though. It's King Kai, trying desperately to get through to Goku. He's realized the same thing that the Saiyans did. If Goku keeps raging like this, he might end up destroying the planet accidentally, and then he'll die out in space. And King Kai has no clue of what else to do, because, first of all, no one could even fight Goku at the moment. But even if someone could fight him, no one's around. He defeated Frieza with ease. And King Kai senses that King Cold is on his way as well, which is just going to complicate things even further. He actually wasn't too far out. When he heard there was an uprising, he was also heading in this direction. Frieza just made it here before him. And since he's lost communication with everybody else, it's only right that he continues going here. He arrives with some of the soldiers that he has, and all they see is a desolate wasteland. Frieza is nowhere to be seen, and there's not even a base left. The planet's in pretty rough shape too, but still somehow intact. Everyone is scattered and explodes as they pick up Goku's energy. And he can actually sense their key. Even though he's acting mindlessly right now, this is so second nature to him that he senses this. Thankfully, the Saiyans were able to lower their key and leave. For everyone else here, that's not going to happen. Goku immediately starts fighting the rest of that army. With King Cole also trying to stop Goku, but he can't do anything. The second he starts fighting, he loses. Barely living another few seconds before Goku kills him. King Kai can't believe what he's seeing. He didn't know Goku was capable of all of this. This power is even worse than the last one, because with Wrathful, Goku at least had some sort of conscience. He knew what he was doing. But in whatever this form is, he's just completely mindless. He's on a rampage. Well, at least he's only fighting enemies right now. And fighting King Cold did buy him some time. As in, it prevented Goku from destroying the entire planet because he was focused on killing King Cold. Which means he used more energy, and hopefully that means he's starting to run out. King Kai tries everything he can, but there's not really much he can do. It seems like this is it for Goku. He's gonna destroy everything out here, and he's gonna die. In one last desperate attempt, he yells out to Goku again. And this time, through the rage, Goku actually hears King Kai's voice. And briefly, he starts to gain some sort of sense of self. He stops rampaging. The thing that set him off wasn't even that severe, and he realizes that he killed the threat. King Kai reminds him, if Frieza actually was a threat, he would have stopped him regardless. And he already did stop him. There's nothing to worry about anymore. Just his own safety. Goku's eyes begin turning to normal. He looks like a regular Super Saiyan. Not that anyone would know what that looks like. But while he does control the form, his aura then explosively flares up, with King Kai scared that Goku's gonna go right back to how he was. And the amount of ki he lets off is insane. It's even higher than before. But after this, Goku just completely powers down. It's almost like his body instinctively powered up just to tire him out, so he wouldn't transform into this again because he's back to base and seemingly back to normal. Although, he kind of forgets what just happened. He sees no one's around and the whole planet's destroyed. And he thought he heard King Kai's voice and King Kai starts talking to him again. That was him. King Kai assures him that everything's fine, especially because he assumes Goku's pretty volatile right now. But what was that power he displayed? Goku honestly doesn't know either. The last thing he remembers is Frieza said something to piss him off and he can't really remember exactly what it was, but it was enough to send him into this. Which is weird because he thought he was already controlling his anger. But King Kai says he unlocks something completely different. It's not his wrathful form, although that seems to be part of it. Goku was already in a volatile state when he transformed, and Frieza just pushed him over the edge. Normally this wouldn't make him turn Super Saiyan, especially this type of Super Saiyan. Whatever that was was pretty scary to King Kai, and Goku barely has any recollection of anything. Apparently in the process, he didn't just kill Frieza, he killed King Cold, Frieza's father. Which kind of bums him out because he was hoping for a better fight. He finally showed off everything against Frieza and was having fun, but Frieza kind of ruined it. Goku probably would have won that battle anyways, but for once in a while, he was actually challenged. 
Although he wonders what happened with the Saiyans. Did they die in the process? And King Kai's actually not sure, but it looks like they might have escaped. By the time he was tuned into everything, they were already gone. Which is weird because Goku knows that he has their ships on him, as well as his own ship. Thankfully, it's still intact in the capsule. He also takes a Senzu for himself because he's pretty worn out. And healing from this gives him a boost in power as well, besides just completely restoring him. Well, he's not particularly close with the Saiyans, but he kind of hopes that he didn't kill them on accident. As for Frieza, King Cold, and his army, all he's really bummed about is the fact that he didn't get to enjoy the battle. Thankfully, no one innocent got caught in the collateral damage. He throws down his capsule, gets on a ship, and heads back to Earth. Still kind of taken aback by the power he just showcased. The Saiyans are also on their way to Earth too. They assume that Goku's dead. There's no way he's going to be able to control that power. And he'll just end up killing himself in the process by destroying the planet, which makes them happy. That's one less thing to worry about. He'll probably even kill King Cold as well. This is the perfect scenario for them. They initially wanted to use Goku to just kill Frieza and then they could do whatever they wanted. But there's also the fact that he would have been a threat later on. This way, it kills two birds with one stone. Or rather, three birds with one stone because King Cold as well. Frieza and Cold are dead, and so is the only other person that could threaten them. Kakarot, that's Super Saiyan. Plus, it gave them some insight into what the Super Saiyan is, assuming that's what they were seeing. They don't know if that's something exclusive to Kakarot because, again, he's already weird to begin with. But at least they now know Saiyans have the potential to transform. Maybe they could find something for themselves. They're gonna go to Earth and make that planet their own. They'll take it without opposition. It does seem like a good place they could live on. And since the Saiyans don't really know what to do next anyways, the best thing they could do for now is find a home base. And they'll be able to take over it if they need to. But by the time they arrive on Earth, Someone's there to greet them. It's Goku. His ship was actually faster than theirs. By the time they get there, he's actually been there a day already. Well, there goes their plans. First of all, because they're probably going to be kicked off this planet. Second of all, he probably wants them dead. And Goku's honestly pretty chill about everything. He tells them it was kind of a dick move that they left him on that planet, but he assumed that they were just terrified. Yeah, they were scared. And that was part of the reason, but really, they just wanted Goku to die. And Goku says it's a good thing they knew to come here, and that they were able to get a ship to leave. It seems like they wanted to meet up with him again. Yeah, that's why they came here, definitely. It's a good thing Kakarot's kind-hearted. If he was any regular Saiyan, they would be dead already. Actually, probably long ago. But they are curious. They thought he would have died, so what happened? Well, he explains what happened, and he doesn't really have much of an explanation. It seems like he can't control that power, which is good for them at least, but it doesn't really change much because they're already weaker than him regardless. And they won't be able to learn anything more about the form. But they can make the best of the situation. Maybe they can actually stay on Earth. They can grow stronger this way, and they could study Kakarot. But on the flip side, Goku also wants to keep them at arm's length to make sure they don't do anything stupid. So it's probably mutually beneficial to keep everyone together. And even though that fight wasn't what he expected, still, he ended up fighting Frieza, which is what he wanted. He got to fight someone stronger that could actually challenge him, even if it turned out pretty bad in the end. Now he's kind of concerned about his power, though. He doesn't really know where to go from here. When he lost control with Wrathful before, he was able to briefly gain it back. This was the first time he did it, and that's when Krillin died. It's weird, he would have expected a more severe reaction to that, but it's also good he didn't have that same reaction because if he went Super Saiyan there and went on a rampage, everyone would be dead. There would be no Earth. At least now he knows, and when it happened, it was somewhere where it could have happened. There was no worry of him killing innocent bystanders on accident. In the end, going to Frieza was really beneficial because now he knows this side of himself. But it's scary because first of all, it's so powerful, and second of all, it's uncontrollable. It was only a stroke of luck that he was able to control it in the first place. And he feels maybe he could transform into it again, but he's also worried that if he does, he'll go on a rampage again. It seems the reason he transformed here is because, with Wrathful, he was already utilizing that anger for power, and Frieza just ended up pushing it over the edge. Again, he's just really glad this didn't happen while he was a kid. Some time passes, and the Saiyans get acclimated to Earth because they kind of have to be complacent here. They spend a lot of time around Goku because they want to see what he's capable of, and they try and get him to use that power again. But he's pretty apprehensive, as you'd probably expect. He has no clue of what will happen afterwards if he transforms, but he is still working on himself. Of course, he's Goku, he's gonna train regardless, but he's also working on his mental state to see if maybe there's still some sort of flaw there that he could fix, and that's why he went on a rampage. He's known for a long while now that he's prone to rage, and when that happens, he gets a lot of power from it too. Maybe this is the full manifestation of that. Wrathful was basically an omen of what's to come. Or maybe the two are completely unrelated. That golden-haired form that everyone else is calling Super Saiyan, he has no clue of what it is or if it's related to Wrathful at all. Either way though, he needs to figure out the source of it because if he does, that's how he can control it. He can make it his own, and he won't have to worry about it anymore. At some point, another fighter appears. Someone shows up at Goku's house. He introduces himself as Trunks and pulls Goku aside. Thankfully, no one else is here to hear this. He explains he's a time traveler and he also explains why he's here. Telling Goku about the androids and also the heart virus, giving Goku his medicine. 
And even though Goku's the only one around here, he actually remembers everything this time. He tries to test Goku's power and transforms into his Super Saiyan, with Goku going to Wrathful to fight him. And Goku is still way above him, and he's not even using his full power. Which confuses Goku. Trunks knows his full power? Well, he's heard about it from Vegeta. Apparently before he died, he did get some sort of control over Super Saiyan. Plus, the others found out they can go Super Saiyan as well. At least, Vegeta found it out first. Before he died, he was able to transform into it. So, that proves to them it's not exclusive to Goku. Especially because Trunks is living proof of that. He has the form himself. It's attainable for anyone. Well, this is all good news to hear. Except the androids part, and the heart virus part, he guesses. But still, this means he could actually prevent everything. And he thanks Trunks for his help. Trunks just saved him from the heart virus, and he probably just saved everybody else from the androids. He'll return in a few years when the androids arrive. Now, Goku gets to work. He tells everybody about what happened, and he kind of has to explain everything with Trunks because no one actually saw him. They don't even really believe him at first, but he has some sort of proof. And he also tells the other Saiyans it means they could transform into Super Saiyan as well. This guy turned into one. And Goku knows why he didn't want them to know who he was, because they would have found out he was Vegeta's son. And maybe he wouldn't have been born if that was the case. So over the next few years, everyone begins training in preparation for the androids. With Goku focusing on training the other Saiyans because they want to work with him and get Super Saiyan for themselves. If that really is attainable, of course, they're going to want to go for that. We reach the end of this time skip, and just as Trunks said, two androids appear in a city one day. It's androids 19 and 20. But by now, Goku feels that he's prepared, and so is everybody else. They'll fight off these androids and win here. Although, there is one thing Goku kind of forgot. He didn't take the heart virus medicine immediately when he saw the signs of it. Of course, it's not a preventative medicine. He had to wait until he actually had the symptoms for it. And they did appear pretty much around the same time, which is exactly when he's about to fight androids 19 and 20. It probably would have been a much easier battle if he was involved, but the Saiyans are pretty happy because this means they get to step up and fight. Although there's only two androids, so they have to decide who's fighting who. Of course, they're only going to be fighting 1v1. But simultaneously, Vegeta, Nappa, and Raditz all turn Super Saiyan. They're ready for their battle. And with that, we'll leave off here for now. What do you guys think about this part? And what's going to happen next time? Leave your thoughts and ideas in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys think. As usual, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps out the channel and it shows me you want to see more videos like this one. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.